What's up guys? Welcome to the stream. This one's going to be a little different than normal. I'm going to be playing a couple of training games. So I'm going to play 10 minute rapid games. And I'm preparing for, I mean, I'm not like seriously preparing. It's kind of just a friendly match, but there is a tournament uh, between two different chess clubs. So one is in Texas, the Texas Chess Center. And one is in New York, the Marshall Chess Club. Marshall Chess Club uh, in New York City has been around like forever, I think. It's one of the oldest chess clubs, I believe. And uh, I don't know a ton about it because I didn't ever really live in New York. But um, anyway, there's a, you know, Texas versus New York essentially is happening in a few days. And so I'm going to do some training for that. I'm representing Texas in the national master section so there's going to be like one grand master from each club and then one international master and then i think it's b-day master national master and, and a woman woman player i believe um something like that i actually have to look at the, the details but all i know is i'm playing for the, the nm spot so uh, i'm going to just do a few practice games the format for that's going to be 10 minutes with i think two second increment today i'm just playing without the increment so it's pretty similar and I'm going to just kind of talk through what I'm thinking about, try to play some some decent decent games here, not make any big mistakes. And let's go ahead, E4. Okay, so Sicilian already off to a pretty good start here. I'm pretty comfortable with against the Sicilian. He does go for E6, which is unfortunate because I do like Bishop to B5. So I'm going to play Knight to C3, give my opponent one more chance to play Knight C6, and they don't do it. They play D5. Okay, so I, I'm not really... In my preparation here, uh, this is not really something that I'm familiar with, so I'm just going to go ahead and take and play some natural moves, try to get past the opening phase. I don't think I'm going to really gain too much of an advantage here in this in this opening, and so what I'm going to do is simply play check, probably just castle right away, and see if I can get the rook to the center and cause some problems for black. Now, of course, they can take me here, and I'll recapture. But then I'm going to be eyeing things like this. And so I am going to go ahead and do that. And, you know, actually, I could even I could even throw in this move right now. But um, yeah, maybe I'll just take first and save it. Okay, so knight c6. So a couple of moves here. We could go for the check, or we could go bishop f4 and put some pressure along these squares, which I kind of like, because that's kind of an annoying threat. How would black deal with that? Rook c8, I guess you have to play. Then I go with the check and I can take advantage. Yeah, I think that's pretty good for me. Let's just verify. Am I missing anything? I don't see a good way for, for black to stop that. So I'm going to go with this threat. I think that's really good. And I do have the follow-up, like I mentioned here. After rook c8, we can go check. And the normal response is no good. You can't go bishop b7. So what do you do if you're black? I don't know. Well, what you play here? Yeah. There you go. You play king d7. Wow. Okay, well, that can't be good for black. So let's think about this for a little bit. I mean, I want to take and open up the queen, but I also don't really want to just let black's pieces into the game so easily. I don't know what that really accomplishes. My knight's probably going to have to move here in a second. I mean, I could take and play c4, just trying to open up the... Or I could play c4 first, maybe? Is that any better? How else can I attack this king? The knight does have to move. You can't go there. You can't, you can't go there either, so you have to go back here. Actually, that looks better than I... That actually does look like a pretty nice idea. Okay. I underestimated that. That's Yeah, I think that is a pretty powerful move. Because recapturing with the pawn opens up the queen, hits the knight, and there's this queen g4 move. So, well, yeah. All of a sudden, I do like this. 
I don't even have to play Queen Square. I can just take this. What am I even saying? That's even better. Just take right here. Yeah, okay. Almost overlooked that one. Hey, Andrew. Hey, Alan. Hey, Harry. You post that Fabiano result. I don't know what that means. Fabiano result. Uh, maybe I'm not uh, aware of what happened. I, I'm not sure what that means. <coughs> I think we're in good shape here. Ooh, and there you go. So that was pretty nice. I just want to check the game review. Make sure I didn't miss anything obvious. But I think we played pretty well. And yeah, there you go. 97. So pretty happy with that. Looks like we had one inaccuracy. Let's see what it was. Oh, D4. So it was essentially me not being familiar with the with the opening here. Okay, but D4 is the second engine choice, so. And castling was pretty good. And then taking here. And yeah, that was a mistake because of bishop f4, which we did see. Rook to e1 check. And after bishop e7, if anybody was wondering, since the bishop is pinned, we actually have knight to d6 check. And the king has to move, and then we grab the rook. And black's, you know, in big trouble. So they tried to avoid that by playing king d7, but if you ever have to move your king like that, it's never a good sign, right? On move 10. So yeah, knight to e5 was the best move. C4 was a pretty good move too, which was the other move I was going to play. But knight to e5 is basically just winning on the spot because the knight has to move somewhere. And then you come in here and it's all over for black. Yeah, there's checkmate to follow. All right, pretty good, pretty good game. Let's play another one. The Grand Swiss result. Yeah, I didn't see it. I actually don't know what happened. So I can't uh, talk about that right now. We've had a busy, busy couple of days, so I just haven't kept up with everything. Oh, I clicked rematch. I didn't mean to click rematch, but they had wanted one earlier, so it's it's fine. Okay, I'm going to play e5 against e4, and just stick with what I'm relatively familiar with. Okay, how comfortable am I with this Fritz Gambit in a 10-minute game against a strong player? Honestly probably comfortable enough to play it because the other line is is studied so much that especially against a strong player there's a really good chance they're going to know a lot of theory so i feel like just mixing it up makes sense just from the standpoint of taking my opponent out of their comfort zone right and they do find the best move but that's okay i know i should play b5 here okay, they take the knight interesting most people retreat the bishop so I guess we have to take that. And now it's a very weird position. Super weird here. There's all kinds of funky stuff happening. So Bishop D7, the Queen's gonna take. Could even take this. No, I can't because my rook. Okay, so hold on. I could actually play knight d7 here and unleash this. Followed by bishop e7 and castle. That looks pretty good. Or I have to find something else to play here. Yeah, I don't necessarily love that. Ah, there's queen d7, though, that I could play. 3, 6, 7, three, we're, so we're down a pawn, but there's just, just such a weird position. I, I feel like knight d7 is good, but then let's say d3 happens. Then I could take. So why doesn't have an easy way to defend the knight? That's what I'm trying to take advantage of here. Yeah, I think this is the move here because it's it's awkward for white. What do you do with this knight? I mean, you could retreat, but then I'm probably going to play e4. And once I can get developed and castled, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about my position. They do go back. So e4, the knight jumps in. I don't really care. I'm going to play bishop d6 and castle. So let's go ahead and do that. So knight e5, bishop d6, attacking here. Am I concerned? No, I have a place to go. Am I concerned? No. Am I concerned? Not really. I'm still going to get castled. There's no tactics, right? 
No tactics. White doesn't really have a lot of pieces out, so I don't have to worry about too much. Let's go bishop d6 and get castled. I'm trying to do a couple things. Number one, I don't want to make tactical mistakes. That's huge. You can't win games if you just wonder tactics. But then the other thing is I want to try to make good strategic decisions positionally that just as the game goes on, I'm going to get into decent positions, right? So developing quickly, castling early seem to be, you know, good decisions. And white's doing the same thing. Of course, I can't take this just yet because of the pin. But after I castle, that will be a threat. So let's go ahead and castle. And of course, this is defended. So that's not a, not a problem for me. You can recapture with the bishop, assuming white wants to take that. They don't have to, but I don't know what else they would play. If they do this, does it make sense to consider a Greek gift sacrifice? My knight's a little bit slow to the party, so I don't think it's going to be good enough. Check. Knight here, knight here. Yeah, see, I'm just a move behind. Now, white's pieces are not really set up to defend the king side, though, so it might still be a possibility. And here we go. Because if I got there, it would guarantee, you know, definitely be good. But what is white going to play from that position to stop me? G3, not worried about it. What move, what move, what move? Knight to e3, knight to e5. Let's say knight to e5, I go here. No, but they can't go back because my pawn. They could go knight to e3 or knight to c3, but again, then I jump in. They could go rook to e1, but I jump in. Honestly, I might do it. The other way would be to play queen h4 first, allow the trade, and then try to bring the knight over, but... I mean, I'm, I'm really not seeing how white's going to defend that. Even though I'm a little bit slower than I would like to be, white's pieces are just so awkward. I just, I feel like I have to do it. I feel like I have to do it. Could be wrong, but we got we to gotta give this a shot. Yeah, we have to do this. Okay, and we're coming in here. And I don't know how white's going to stop us, basically. Oh, knight to e5 does control that square. Oops. Oops. And knight to e3. Yeah, I don't know why I didn't think about that. See, that's kind. Of, that's the kind of stuff, like the tactical mistakes, that I, I really, I don't want to make those mistakes, right? Like, that's pretty obvious. I should have, yeah. That being said, I don't think my position is totally hopeless. But it is uh, it is not as good as I thought it was going to be. Now, do I want to like change my strategy here? Bring the knight this way? I could still go there and then use the bishop to attack. That's another way to do it. So let's say I go there, takes, takes. Let's say knight c3, bishop here. Where could the queen go? That actually doesn't look so bad. Taking, that's not going to be as good because d3 is going to happen. Yeah, maybe, all right, let's, let's try this. Because if I go here and get the pawn there, then I, I'm, I'm going to have these checkmate ideas, right? So how is white going to stop that? I don't know. They play d3, I go here. Then I have queen here, and it's it's a checkmate. Again, notice how the queen... Ah, that's a good idea. Yeah, that's a smart move. Although, is it a smart move? Hold on, hold on. Here takes... There's a perpetual check if I want it. Check, check. Yeah, that's just going to be a perpetual probably. Although, I don't know. Maybe I even have time to bring a rook over. But here's the other thing. I could go here and blockade this. If I blockade this, this guy's stuck. This guy's stuck. This is stuck. This is stuck. And then I attack with the rook. So which way do we want to do it? Perpetual check. Eh, or try to bring the rook up. Maybe. This looks pretty good, though. 
Now, white could bring the queen over anyway and sack this, but then I get the rook for the two pieces, and I live to fight another day. Yeah, I think we're going to do that. Make sure, yeah, I think we're going to do this. This is going to be such a powerful spot for the bishop because it shuts off the queen. It shuts down the pawn, so the bishop is stuck, so the rook is stuck. Everything's stuck. I've talked about this many times before on the channel. If you can blockade that d-pawn before the bishop gets out, very, very dangerous. Okay, here we go. And now I'm, I'm just going to try to get a rook over here. f5, rook up and over. It also added benefit that it defends here. And I could even push the pawn if I need it. So everything about that makes sense to me. And now I'm two moves away from a rook. We're doing okay on time. Five minutes. Multiple ways to attack here. So let's... Ah, rook e3. Okay, interesting. Hmm. He wants to come here, maybe? Okay, I could still go f... Yeah, I'm still liking my attacking chances. The question is, though, what's the better way to do it? Yeah, I, th I think we got to push this now. So let's go ahead, get the pawn rolling here. And I don't know where do I want my queen is the question. Which square? I believe here. Queen could come back. We have f3. Rook can come over. Oh, there's a super nice line there. Okay. Yeah, let's see. This is not a problem. I think this is where I want the queen. Because I'm eyeing, I'm eyeing these squares. But I'm also keeping pressure on the rook so that this pawn can never really move. And we're setting up a very, very serious threat here. Because once we play f3, we take this, look at this rook. And again, the same you know, thing that I've mentioned. Yeah, I was expecting that move. Okay, f3, I think, is the move here. And they think they have me, but they don't. Ooh, that's so nice. All right, so we're going to go for it. Rook g3 is a blunder. They fell for it. Nice little tactic here. Look at this. The queen sacrifice with the follow-up pawn promoting to another queen here. Essentially, I want a rook for free. And I'm going to get an attack on the king. Beautiful move there. My opponent was playing a little too fast. Didn't see it. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see a resignation right here. Because Again, they can't use these pieces. They only have a queen and a knight left, essentially. And I'm going to have a queen and two rooks and a bishop. It's over. Bam. Look at this. It's beautiful. Super, super nice stuff. King's got to go here to h2. I'm going to get the queen. And it's all over. I mean, I don't think it makes sense to get a knight because I just don't have enough to do the checkmate, so we'll get the queen. Okay, and now it's just a matter of not blundering the game away here at the end. I think I'm just going to bring the rook over. Let's just make sure the knight can check me. I don't care. If the queen moves, I'm going to win a piece. Looks pretty straightforward. Let's go. I really don't want to move that bishop, right? Because I'm, I'm happy leaving those pieces just stuck for the whole game. All right, good game to our opponent. Let's see how we did. Let's check the game review on this one. I think this should be relatively high accuracy. Yeah, 79. Yeah, no, okay, not as much as I was expecting. I was thinking it was going to be like 80-something, but... Um, okay, let's see. Okay, so we played this line. Okay, not the book move. Of course, we need to take back. And let's see here. 
Okay, so all of these blocking moves are pretty equal according to, to the engine. It likes queen d7 a little bit better, which I did think about, but I'm like, after they take here, I probably take here. I mean, it just looks like a big trade, and I didn't know what was happening. Yeah, Stockfish says this is slightly better for me because I can jump the knight over here and start getting annoying, and white has to play king d1. Okay, so yeah, I do see that. Bishop f5 probably. Nope. Jump the knight in right away. So same thing that we that I did in the game, right? Blockading this pawn. That's what Stockfish wanted. Interesting. Okay. But 97 is a pretty good move too. All three of those were playable. E4, yep. Bishop d6, yep. Castles. Let's see. This is the moment. Yeah, Stockfish says don't do this. Nope. Stockfish says no way. Just play knight to b6. Let him take you. Game goes on and you have a nice position. That's what Stockfish said. Okay. Yep, there's the blunder. And it's probably because I overlooked the, the fact that the knight controls the square. Let's see. One. Yeah. Oh, no. Queen. I'm sorry. What? Queen a5? Stockfish wants to defend this way. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it makes total sense. Right? You defend the checkmate and you're gonna come over here to G3 with the queen and trade everything off. Incredible. I didn't never even crossed my mind. See, this is this is a weak spot for me, guys. This is a big weak spot for me. I sometimes I don't I don't appreciate all of the different ways to defend or even attack in a given position, right? So like in my mind I'm thinking there's very very few ways that white can defend a checkmate here. And Stockfish is like, no, there's actually a simple way, right? I don't know why. I didn't even think about it. Makes total sense. Yeah, wow. Interesting. And it's basically Stockfish says you're in trouble. Now, this was not very good for white because now I can do this. And now I get a little bit of an attack. Yeah, and they started to slowly lose the game. Ooh, not the move. Yes, Stockfish said I should have taken the draw. This is what I was talking about. Perpetual check here. Check, check, check. I can just check all day long. White can never get away from this area of the board, right? But for some reason, Stockfish says bishop to e2 is not good. Rook e1. Knight c3. Yeah, Stockfish likes white's position. Why is that? Rook e3. F4. Rook h3. Queen g3. Yeah, it was right at the end. It was right at the end. Huh. If white just plays rook h2, Stockfish says white's winning. Very interesting because from my point of view, it looks like I'm, I have a nice attack. Rook here, double up the rooks, but Stockfish says no. Okay. And then the brilliant queen takes g3, and it's all over. All right. Well, uh, I did learn something from that. Let's go ahead and play another one. And we'll play against a different opponent this time. All right, 2200. Play e4 here. d6. I'm going to go with the... Uh, Oh, he's going to play this and trade? Okay. So, I mean, I could do this, and I'm going to have a slightly better position. I don't like just trading the queens off like that super early, so what I'm going to do instead is just keep keep the, the tension. I'm just going to develop and keep the tension. Yes, it's, there's nothing wrong with that, but then I have to go into an endgame, and I, I just don't want to do that right now. I want to try to actually make something you know, more substantial happen here. So... I think we're going to go with knight f3. I'm just going to develop quickly here and try to put some pressure on. So knight to g5, what happens if I play that move? Is it d d5 now? Probably. So maybe I just castle? What's the move here? I don't know. actually know. G5. Yeah, I think we can just castle. And if knight takes rook e1... Do we transpose into a different line there? 
Yeah, I think we would. I think we would transpose into a good version of a line. So I'm going to do that. If black wants to, they can take and play d5. They don't want to do it. Okay. So we're going to go rook e1. Defend. And then we'll take this pawn back. Next move. After black probably castles. Could also just turn it into a, some sort of other gambit. But I think at this point, maybe we just take it. I don't really want to take with the queen and lose a tempo here, right? So that's why I'm taking with the knight. And of course, we have to start thinking about developing these pieces now. Black's going to be doing the same thing, likely. So bishop g4, bishop d7, knight c6. Probably going to see one of these moves. Okay, wait, what? He wants to go here, but don't I have this in-between move here? So I'm up a piece. If I just move the rook back, then I lose the piece back. Fine, but I don't have to do that. I can take here. Take, I save my bishop. I get two pieces for a rook and a pawn, which, if you guys remember, that's a good trade for me. Yeah, I think it's. I think it's a... Inaccuracy by my opponent. Let's take it. And then we will do this one properly next. Now that I'm looking at it, can I also just take the pawn? That's another way. Although that way... So let's say I take, 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 take. There's a pin. And then there's a move like C5. And that's a different story. Because I can't move the knight or I lose the queen. If I move the queen, then I lose the knight. And then black's probably doing okay. Yeah, so I think we do have to stick with the original here. Get the knight and the bishop for the pawn and rook. And I'm very happy with that. Yeah, let's do it. Of course, if they take here, I just move my rook and I'm up. Uh, you know, a piece. So yeah, okay, as expected. So they have the rook and the pawn for these two pieces. Perfectly fine trade for me. Now the big question is, can I get away with grabbing that pawn or not? So let's say I take it, they're going to play rook d8. The problem is, unless I have a tactic to get out of it, c5 is going to mess me up if I just move back. I don't see a tactic, but I don't think I can take it. Unfortunately, as much as I would like to, I don't I don't think we can get away with that. Knight to c3. C3. Yeah. I don't think so. So I'm going to just go back here. I don't want to use up all my time trying to make it work. I don't think it does. Okay, he's going to get some, some space here. Nothing we can really do about that. I could offer the trade, or I could just go back, f allow the pin, but that's probably fine. We have bishop b2, so let's go ahead. Of course, I'm not worried about this. I can just retreat over here. It's not a big deal. This is now potentially a target, especially if this happens, right? This would be a backward pawn here that we could take advantage of. I don't think black's going to do that. Yeah, it's more of a normal-looking move. Okay. I want to just develop. So, Bishop F4. Ah, but then he wants to take and check me here. Don't really want to allow that. So maybe I will go with this move first. And we'll get that Bishop out in just a moment. Yeah, I don't, we'll have time. <clears throat> I don't want any shenanigans happening here. So I want to make sure I have some extra defenders here. On this F3 square. A little bit tricky for, for me here after Knight's... Okay, he trades, which... That seems like it just makes my life easy. So I'm happy with, with that. I think if Black played Knight c6, yeah, it would have been much more challenging because of the pin. But okay, let's keep moving on. Now we can probably just play Bishop f4. 
Okay, putting the bishop on a good square, keeping an eye on the time. I don't want to get too low, but I think we've kind of survived that initial pressure. Now, hopefully you're going to see how the two bishops should really be able to outperform the rook and the pawn here. They really should. And I think the first thing that I'm going to do right off of the bat here is play h3. I don't want any back rank mate problems for the rest of the game. Now seems like a perfectly fine time to do it since I didn't have any other move jumping out at me. Why not play h3? Give my king that safe square to go to. Okay, I'm thinking about c3 so that I can bring the bishop back here if I need to. Also kind of shuts down what the knight might try to do. Let's go ahead with that. And just sort of scanning for tactics. Shouldn't be too many tactics that I have to worry about in this position, though. I mean, what is black going to do? Right? They're probably going to push the pawn. But other than that, I have everything covered here. They can't really invade. The knight can't really do much right now. Primarily these this pawn that I have to be careful about. We've kind of shut down the knight. Probably going to play queen somewhere. Can't go here because of the fork, but we could go to c2 or a4 or d2. I think I'm going to go to d2 and try to play rook to e1. Basically, the whole point of this move is to get the rook involved, right? The rook's stuck in the corner. I need it to come over here. So, okay, that's already defended, which is nice, but I still might just retreat anyway just to... In case I want to use my queen, right? I don't want it to be tied down defending the bishop. I'm going to go ahead and go back prophylactic, proph prophylactically, is that the word? Um, just to kind of plan ahead for that. Rook here, rook here. I'm going to play a4. The question is, is that a benefit or a weakness for me? Because it creates a hole, so I don't actually know. I think I'm going to just go here. I think... I think it's better, I can't actually remember, I think it's better to trade the rooks in this situation. There's a principle, and I can't remember which way it is. Is it better for me to trade the rook, or is it better for my opponent to trade I, when there's the rook against the two pieces? There is a principle for that, I just can't think of what it is. But it seems like it would make sense to trade it, because then the rooks can't help each other, so then there's only one rook that I have to deal with. I'm going to go bishop c2 here. Actually, yeah, I'm going to go bishop c2, and I'm actually going to think about this move. Although initially I have the threat on the pawn, I I'm going to try to make black create some weaknesses. Like if they have to play g6, then they, they've created a weakness over here. The king is a little bit more exposed, and then I can start thinking about how to use my pieces to attack. So that's the idea here. Of course, I have to pay attention to this, but right now I'm covered. Everything is going to be defended. Even if I go here, it's still defended, so I'm not concerned. And even if the rook comes down, I do have king h2. So I don't even have to really worry about that, honestly. Okay, so they defend the pawn by pushing it. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and trade. And I think as we get closer to the end game here, you're going to see the bishops at some point are going to be able to really control the, the game here. We haven't seen it quite yet. The only concern would be if this pass pawn somehow causes me problems. That, that's the only way that I see myself losing this game. So now's really the, the question. Is that going to happen or am I okay here? I think as long as I play king to f1 and get my king over to e2, we're fine. So we're going to do that. We're going to play king f1. Well, we could go check first. Ooh, that's a nice move. I didn't, I didn't think about that. Okay, they didn't see it. That might have been an annoying move for me. But now that I have my king here, I think we're okay. And the reason is I'm going to blockade with the bishop, and I can always support it with my king. My king was stuck over here. I might have had some problems stopping this pawn with just the bishops, but as long as they have some support, the bishops are going to be very, very powerful here. It's 
let's go ahead and blockade that because I'm pretty sure I'm going to want to do that regardless. And I think what I'm going to do is play b4 and put my bishop right here. Yeah. Make sure it can't get trapped here. That would be bad, but it looks okay. So we're going to go b4, jump the bishop in. And if I can get that set up, yeah, here we go. We, we've got it now. Notice the this file's blocked, this file's blocked, this file is controlled. So I'm pretty happy with that. He does get the king to a nice square, but I still feel like there must be some tricks that I have here. Um, let's go g3. So the rook can't invade, the king can't invade. A5 isn't really a threat at the moment because of this one. It's still it's still not easy. It's still not easy because that extra pawn actually. Hmm. So how do we do this? I have a couple of ideas, but I want to see what, what is Black's plan going to be here. My, my primary idea is a4. Although it's, it's a risky move, right? Because I can create my own pass pawn, but then I also have another one that I have to deal with, which... Yeah, maybe it's too early for that. Okay, he goes for... That's an interesting idea. Um, takes the rook is there. A4. I'm going to do this, and then I think I have A4. I also could go here. No, let's, let's go with A4. And on takes, we just take. Yeah, okay, now we're in good shape. Because now the king should be able to come over. And black's going to have to watch this. Do I want to let the rook in there or not? I don't think so. I don't think I want to let the rook to the second rank. Yeah, I'm going to try to push this as far as I can. And force black to go guard it. I think that's the, the way to do this. Because we can go all the way to a6 here. And then the rook is essentially stuck here. Now it's still annoying. Oh, I should have... No, I couldn't have grabbed it. Never mind. All right, let's go ahead and, and lock that in. And now we might try to do something like this. Still tricky. It is still tricky. One of my kids is constantly jiggling the, the door knob. It's getting a little bit distracting. Okay. I'm going to make a run with the king here. See if he takes that. Let me just go here. Can I sack that? Hold on. Here? I think I can, but I don't want to risk it right now, so I'm going to try to do it without sacrificing that bishop. If we can. F3, oh, he's going to do that. Interesting. Okay, that I'm okay with because now we can come over here, maybe. No, I can't. All right. Hmm. <laughs> okay, here we go. Here we go. We can use the king. Here we go. Now we're threatening this guy. 
Let's go with the check. We got the pawn. And now you're starting to see the power of the bishops here. That doesn't work because we have a fork. And we also have this, yeah. Lots of lots of ways to win now, I think. Okay, let's go ahead and get this pawn up here. There you go. All right. Tough game, though. Tough game. That pawn was, was tricky to work around, for sure. Okay, let's go ahead and get the queen. No need to overcomplicate this. And we'll just grab all the pawns. And as long as we don't lose on time, we're in good shape. Go with the check. Uh, okay, let's not stalemate here. Let's think about this. Let's go here. Make sure we have a square for the king to go to. That's super important. Right? Super important. And we can push this guy all the way down here. Follow it up with the bishop check. And there you go. Let's make sure it's not a stalemate. I do see a square, so we're good to get the queen. Actually, there's two squares. All right, good game to our opponent. Let's check the game review. I think we played relatively well. I think that was a relatively high played game. Like 80, 73. Okay, not too terrible. We had a brilliant move. What was the brilliant move? Remember any brilliant moves? Oh, it was rook takes e7. Okay. Yeah, so that was the, the big mistake. Black was doing fine until they decided to go for this. And it was not good because of what we played in the game. Rook takes e7. Yep. Stockfish says bishop f1. Just getting that bishop totally out of the way and defending the back rank right away was the, the best approach. Okay. And then let's go ahead and let's see. I think. Yeah, so, and then we just had to kind of fight through the, the end game here. But the thing about the two bishops versus the the rook, or any two minor pieces, is you're able to attack more things with the two minor pieces, right? If, even if these were knights, or if it was a knight and a bishop, you're able to attack more squares on the board because you have two pieces. And also, because if you ever attack the rook, the rook has to move. So there are... There are things that I can do, like put my bishop here, and I don't have to worry about the rook attacking it, that black can never do, right? But even if black put the rook here, if I attacked it with the bishop, they'd still have to move it. Do you see how that works? So the rook is limited, even though it's a more powerful piece, it's limited in where it can go to. And notice we've, we've kind of taken away all the squares, but my bishops are able to like maneuver around, and eventually, it takes a little while, right? But eventually stuff starts happening. And we saw that here. I played a4, and we took this pawn, and then we had this interesting dynamic. But again, the bishops are just controlling so many squares. Look at this. Look at all the squares that are being controlled here by these bishops, right? And then you had the king, and it, it's a lot, right? Look at this. Like, there's very few squares that the rook can use to maneuver. And that's generally why the two bishops or the two knights or a knight and a bishop is going to outperform a rook, even if they have an extra pawn like they did in this game, right? All right, cool. Let's see. Uh, let's play one more training game here. So far, so good. I'm feeling pretty good. If we can play like this in the match on Tuesday. The match is on Tuesday night, by the way. I'll probably schedule a stream later so you guys can, you know, see when it is if you're interested. But I think if we play like this, we'll be, we'll be okay. I've felt pretty good. I'm going to stand up for this game. I'm not going to walk. I'm just going to stand. Okay, let's, let's, uh, yeah, we'll play a Ponziani. I think I'm comfortable enough to play the Ponziani here. He 
does go for the d5 line, which is fine. I'll play queen to a4. This is one of the main lines here. I think f6 or knight here. Kind of the two main moves. Hmm. What match? So it's it's the um, Texas Chess Center is playing a match against the Marshall Chess Club in New York City, and so it's one grandmaster from both places. Or, or so Texas has a grandmaster, New York has a grandmaster. They play. And there's an international master from each to play. FIDE master, and then I'm the national master on Texas, and then there's someone else from New York, and everybody, and then there's one uh, woman on each team, and so it's a five. Is that five? Yeah, five people for each team. And you play four games against the same person. And he plays Bishop D7. I don't think that that's the move. I don't think that's the move. Because I believe I can just take it. Now, there's going to be some interesting things after knight to D4. But as far as I can tell, I just go back here. And I'm up a pawn. So... I believe that's why that's not the move. And it seems like our opponent wasn't aware of that, unless this is a gambit that I'm unaware of. But I think I just go back here. Unless I want to sack the queen for two pieces, which I don't want to, so I'm going to go back. They can play bishop g4. No, they can't, because the knight's hanging. So they, they can't play bishop g4. So I, I don't know what are they going to do. Take it. Okay, we're going to take that, defend our pawn. And I think this is why you don't play bishop d7, because now you're just down a d pawn here. And maybe, I guess, black gets some compensation for that. So maybe it's a real line. I don't I don't know. We'll have to check, because I could, I could be wrong on this. I could be wrong. I think I am going to support that, though. I think I am going to defend the pawn, and it gives my knight a place to go to. The... Uh... The opening explorer is telling me this is called the Caro Gambit. So this is actually a move called the Caro Gambit. Interesting. I don't, I don't know uh, if it's a good if it's a good line or not, but apparently it is a move. Okay, so he's taking advantage of this. I do have to be careful for stuff like this, right? But if I play knight c three, I'm gonna have knight e four. Gonna have knight e four. So let's go ahead. Got to watch out for tactics here because black has three pieces ready to go. I'm still behind in development. That happens a lot when you take a free pawn, right? You, you have to be willing to defend for a little bit, solidify your position. Usually I'm going to say h3 is a move that you don't want to play. But in this position, there's some serious threats there that might be worth stopping. The other option here, what happens? I take the rook comes over a castle just in the nick of time. Ah, but there's bishop four. No, I can trade and do stuff. Let's see. It's awkward because it blocks this, but I could deal with that by going over here. So bishop d3 seems to be okay. Bishop g4, we move here. It's not a big deal. The knight has to move somewhere. Okay, I think we can play bishop d3. Or h3. All right, I'm going to play it. I don't see a tactic. Hopefully I'm not missing something. This would be the move that black would want to play, but I've got it overprotected, which should buy me enough time to castle. Okay, so takes, rookie eight, castle, and then I'm out of danger, and it's just a big trade, and, and the game goes on. Unless I'm missing something. I'm not seeing it. There's also knight g4, but then again, I just castle, I think. Bishop g4 is annoying, but not really. I just go there. Yeah, I think I think we're doing okay. Try the queen's gambit next. No, I don't really play the queen's gambit that often, and I wouldn't play that in a in a serious 
game that I'm trying to win. I've got to play openings that I'm somewhat familiar with against strong players. Usually. I mean, I guess I could, in theory, play it. Okay, he goes rookie 8 immediately. I'm going to castle. This is a no-brainer for me, I think. Has to be the move, right, to get away from that. And, of course, I still have three pieces, and there's only two defenders. So I can get away with taking that. So, I don't know what Black is going to do next. Okay, that's a pretty forcing move, so I don't really have many options. I think I have to just go here. I don't have any other squares for my queen. That's a move, because the knight can't take, the king would have to take, but I don't want to give up my bishop. So yeah, we have to do this. Let's just go ahead. A little tricky position. I do have to be careful. I don't want my queen to get trapped or walk into some other tactic. But I want to start looking for ways to either simplify and trade some pieces or get this bishop into the game. It might be by moving this guy somehow, or it might be by doing this. But I need, I need that bishop to get off the back because I need the rook to be able to help at some point. Right? We've seen this. From the other side, in those other games I was playing, when the bishop and the rook were stuck for long periods of time, it doesn't end well. So we have to keep that in mind. Good news is this this pawn on d5 is actually kind of annoying for uh, for black because it sort of shuts down some of their piece, uh, you know, mobility. Right, the queen is blocked off. You can't use these squares and that kind of thing. Okay, he goes queen c8. So he's defending this. He wants to move the knight and trap my queen, most likely, right? So h3 would be a move because then if the knight moves, we take it. So h3. Also here to, to force a trade. So let's say I go here, knight h5. I'd have to play queen here. Bishop could go back. And it, it just looks like my queen's getting trapped. It, it really does. So I think I do have to play. I think I do have to play h3. What's the bishop move? It also gives my queen a safe square if I need it. Well, let's go ahead. Can't let the queen get trapped. I wonder why they went to c8 instead of d7, though. That's... Maybe because they didn't want the oh they didn't want the queen to be hanging on some of those lines, I see. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. But then they can't get the rook involved. I guess it was needed. Okay, so rook to e one seems too slow. I really need to think about this, but also forcing some trades. So knight to e four now. Can I get away with that? Takes takes f5, I go back, f4, I move somewhere. Ooh, it's risky, but I could probably do that. I guess rookie one is not a terrible idea. I really just like this idea of trading, though. But I could also just... Just do this. Just b3 and bishop b2. What's black going to do next? I mean, what, what are they going to do? Push this? So this would stop that. What else are they going to do? Move the queen somewhere? I don't know what they're going to do. So maybe I should do this, because I don't see any moves for black. d6. I jump in, takes, takes, f5, okay. Then we have stuff like this with the double, yeah, okay. I think rookie one actually, upon further investigation, it looks like it, it stops this. It, it's a good file for the rook to be on. I'm not super concerned about this anymore because the knight can't really come in to put more pressure. I don't think I need the rook defending that, right? So, yeah, with all that in mind, it seems like a good good square for the rook.
Any chance I would play the Kings Indian defense in the match? That's a good question. I would consider it. Yeah, I would consider it. I don't know that my knowledge would be up to up to par, uh, but maybe. Kings Indian is is one of those super complicated openings that it's hard for everybody to, you know, study it really, really well. So maybe, yeah, maybe I could get away with that. But against D4? Against D4, yeah, that's a question. Would I play the Kings Indian or would I play B5 since I've been experimenting with B5 so much lately? Honestly, I might play B5. He goes for Bishop D6. So he wants to line up on the Queen and play E4. Pretty straightforward. We could blockade it. But then we run into F5 issues at the end. But then we have this one. All right, hold on. Also C5 or no, maybe just Knight B5. Knight B5 makes sense because you have the capture immediately. Yeah, I don't want to allow that. I think it's nice to be five. I don't want to allow this idea of, of the pawn just running forward and gaining a bunch of tempos. I think we got to go knight to b5 here. On e4, we take. Pretty happy with that. If the bishop moves, we're going to grab the pawn. Pretty happy with that. Okay, okay, okay. I don't know what black's going to do, but... I'm feeling pretty good about this position now. Now, we are playing without the bishop and the rook still, but he goes for this. Okay, well, I'm going to take the bishop for sure. And what's the idea? Can I just retreat my bishop? What exactly is the idea here? All right, well, I'm just going to go back. I don't want to trade because then I lose the pawn here. But if I just go back, I think everything's good. Now I'm probably going to play b3 and bishop to b2. Queen to d7. So he defends the pawn. He's going to bring the rook over maybe. Yeah, b3, bishop to b2. And I think we're in business. I think we're in business now. Because I've basically finally solved my problems and gotten my pieces developed. Of course, yeah, you can take that if you want to. I could really take back either way. Probably going to take with the bishop, honestly. Yes, I will have double isolated pawns, but this one's not really that easy to attack. This one I could probably just trade off, which means I would only have one isolated pawn, which is fine. This way, I could also do that and just move my bishop. But of course, I have a more immediate threat of just taking the, the knight. Okay, he's going to do that. So do I want to trade? That bishop just seems pretty good. I don't think I want to give it up for the knight. Even though it doesn't mess up black's pawn structure, probably not worth it. Probably not worth it. Where do I want this rook to go? Hmm. I'm going to go here because I want to try to play d3 and maybe trade the pawn like this. So yeah, we'll, we'll just set everybody up here in the middle. Focus on this area of the board. Okay, and like I said, I'm going to take with the bishop. I think makes the most sense. Keeps this guy protected from the rook. Keeps the b file shut down, the c file shut down so the rooks can't invade. Now, I could have also done this, which maybe that's better. I don't know, but... I'm pretty happy with this. D3. Yeah, if I can trade this these pawns off, then it unleashes my rooks. We're up the pawn. Both of the bishops look pretty nice. You could argue this one's not as good as it should be. I could play A4. It's a cheap little threat, but it's still a threat. May as well throw that move in there, make black deal with it real quick. And then I can continue with d3. Yeah, so d3. I don't know how black's going to... Maybe they're going to just go here. 
which is fine. I'm just going to do this. Although, let's see, I don't think they can get away with that. Yeah, maybe I'll even trade at that point. Okay, they do that. But they're trying to take my pawn now. So maybe I will trade now because I don't want to lose that pawn. Yeah, I think I will now. Okay. D3, the issue is... Is there an issue? Hold on. I also have some other options that look very appealing. All right, we're going to go with D3. But this one was tempting too. Yes, it was. D3 takes... The queen takes here. Oh, he goes for F5. Interesting decision. Now I will go relocate the bishop here to c6. It looks like a much more aggressive square from my bishop. Got to keep an eye on the time. So we've got that set up. Let's start playing some faster moves here and not lose on time. I don't want to throw this game on the clock. Still a tricky position, though. Got to be careful. I think my rooks here and here would be safe. Also push this. No, let's go ahead and blockade it. Get the rooks to safety first. This guy I don't have to worry about. This guy I don't have to worry about. I have to watch out for this one, though. But I can put my queen there, actually. So, okay. So queen f4, maybe the rook. Oh, he's going to just attack like that. All right, all right. Let's go queen f4. Let's be careful. There's a, there's a pin. Be very careful here. Let's probably double up the rook still. It's a safe move, I think. And g3. Yeah, maybe g3 to relieve some pressure here. I don't want that battery to cause me problems. I have to make sure my queen doesn't get trapped, though. That's the, the only issue. Queen doesn't have a lot of places to go. Okay. He's going there. Let's move the king. I want to get away from, from any type of tactics that I might miss. Maybe I push the pawn. Maybe it's the time. Or can I get away with f3? Mm, maybe f3 and just take this. That might be powerful, too. Uh-oh, uh-oh, what is this? Okay, let's go g4. And, and yeah, maybe now f3. We're doing good on time. Yeah, we're going to win. I think we're going to win as long as we don't blunder this here. Let's play f3. Let's take this. Let's trade. We're up. We can, yeah, we can just trade this. That's fine. Okay, okay, okay. Let's go here. Nice square for my queen. Play b4. Let's play b5. Let's play b6. Threatening b7. Oh, ooh, 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 ooh. Good move. I didn't see that. Hold on. I did not see that. Man, okay. I got to defend. I got to defend the checks here. Yeah, we, we did it. We got to... Oh, and he blunders the queen. Blunders the queen. Oof. All right. I was worried about a perpetual check there at the end. But our opponent was too short on time. Wow. All right. Close game. Close game. Let's see. How did we play there? 78. Okay. That's not terrible. It was a long game, and it was a complicated game, so I'm, I'm okay with that 78 score there. Let's actually take a quick look here. So I believe, and I'm going to tell you right now, this bishop d7 move. Oh no, it's it's a legit line. It actually, oh okay, it actually performs very well for black. I did not realize that. I did not realize that. So I stand corrected. That's totally a playable move. Okay, so I learned something about the Ponziani there.
Yeah, so interesting. How, how does a black score so well in this line? C4, bishop c5. There must have been a move that black could have played right here. Stockfish, nope, Stockfish says rookie eight. Okay. Stockfish says, yeah, bishop g4. They played it perfectly. They played the opening like perfectly. Uh, right up until that move. Okay. E4. So you force the queen and then you push. I'm going to go back. Bishop to d6. I'm going to jump over here. And you play c6 if you're black. And you just have a really nice aggressive position. I don't want to take this because of the double attack. I have to play d4. And then you don't on passant. You take here. I play c5. And we actually end up with an equal position like this. Okay. Who knew? Who knew? All right. So... Yeah, e4 was not the way because I could just take and go back and I'm I'm good. And now I'm much better. I've stabilized the game. And a matter of not messing anything up. I don't think we did. Ah, over takes e4. What I played. Okay, whatever. Alright, I'm gonna play one more game. So far so good. We've won all the training games, although I haven't played anyone rated higher than me. So let's see if we can get a get a higher rated opponent here. No, nope, twenty one hundred. All right. Well, too bad. We'll just uh, yeah, let's do it again. We just studied it, got some some more knowledge about it. Let's go ahead and and jump back into another Ponziani. Okay, the knight to f6 line. So we're going to play d4, and usually they're going to take here. Oh, he takes this way. Okay, I like this one for us. We're going to play d5. I know this line. And once the knight moves, we're going we're gonna to snag the pawn here. Uh, I think black can go to b8 or to e7. I think both of these are... No, ah, he's going to go for this line. Okay. This is the super crazy line, right, man, all right, here we go, get ready. I'm going to sit down for this game, because it's about to get crazy. It's about to get really crazy, okay, pretty sure I go queen to d5 here, I think this is the last book move that I that I remember. And I think black's just going to move the bishop. And then I have to really think hard about what I'm going to play next. Man, okay, this is one where you really, you really benefit if you know the theory. I don't remember it. So what's going on here? Well, I'm getting out of the fork and I'm counterattacking the bishop. I'm also threatening over here which sort of looks like a big threat, but it's really not that big of a threat. Because I think, I think what black will do is just sack the bishop and then castle and just attack me. Because I have like no pieces out. I don't th think that's the best line. And maybe it is. Maybe it is. I feel like that's the one that I always play. And I don't... <sighs> Something is telling me, like, it's, maybe it's not the right one. There's bishop g5, f6. Do I really want to throw those moves in? It, it stops black from castling, but then I'm going to probably lose my bishop. Bishop c4. What if I play bishop g5 followed by bishop c4? Just go and pull out aggressive. Kind of hard to stop the checkmate. We still have this idea. Wow, yeah, I really don't remember. We're going to try this one just to see what happens here. On f6, I'm going to go with bishop c4. And I don't know. I guess black's going to play rook f8. I'm 
I mean, can I get away with this? If I just take that, he takes me. Oh, he's going to go queen e7 instead. Okay, interesting. Now I can't do that because of the queen. Or can I? Hmm, hold on, let's see. He takes here, check. Wow, I don't even know. I can also take this way. Maybe that's better now. What's black going to do? Take my rook. I don't really care about the rook or the bishop. I think this is good now. Because now I have the, the, the rook attacked and black can't castle. So we've kind of, kind of caused black some problems, I feel like. Mm-hmm. Let's go for that. Go for that. I think they have to sack it. And then they're probably just going to move their rook here. Okay. So bishop's hanging, rook's hanging. But we've got black's king stuck in the center. We've got a couple pieces out. Not a terrible trade, honestly. The question is, what do I do next? I could save the bishop, lose the rook, play knight to d2, and try to castle. In that situation, I've got all four of my pieces. Black has a rook. Pretty good. Pretty good for me, actually. But what else is black going to do? Push a pawn. That's not a big deal. Can't castle. D5, I'm going to take it. Yeah, so I'm, I'm definitely leaning towards here. The other thing would be something like rook f1. Rook f1, I don't have to lose the rook. If I lose the bishop, then we sack here. We actually have three pieces for the rook, which is fantastic. However, is my king safe? It's not. There's a check. And I lose a piece immediately. Not ideal. Not ideal. The rook f1, he takes me. I don't have to sack that, though. I could do something else. What would I do? Knight to d2, maybe? And then I don't know what's black going to do. And who knows? Any number of things. Maybe push a pawn. Maybe try to move this knight away. Mm, then I could probably try to castle. And then we have... No, I can't castle with the knight here. These are the positions where it's, it's very difficult to find the best moves. All right, we're going to go with this line. I'm going to sack the rook and, and go for the one where I can get castled. Just because... I don't know what else to do that looks better. This looks the best to me, just getting that king to safety and then just being happy that I have the two pieces for the rook. I think it's it's still a pretty nice deal. Okay, he's going to force a trade. Just fine. Just go here. I mean, I don't, I don't actually don't have to move it. I could castle and then just take the knight. Hmm. That's interesting too, isn't it? Yeah, that is interesting. Let's see. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that because I really want to get my king out of the center. All right. So we lose the bishop. We take the knight. We have the two knights against the rook. But black has what? Three, six, seven. A rook and two pawns for the two knights. This is Yeah, this is crazy. Oh, he's going to... Was that a blunder? Is that a blunder or a sacrifice? Had to have been a blunder. Had to have been. Yeah, that's not a good move. That helps things quite a bit, I think. I mean, it does open up the rook, but not at the cost of a, of a pawn like that. Also opens up the king for, for me to attack the king here. Queen c6 maybe, actually. Queen c6, bring the rook somewhere, jump the knights in. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I don't care about that. Let's see. I think we want to go with this first. Do I take it? I don't really want to worry about it, but I guess I kind of have to pay a little bit of attention. 
So I guess I'll take it. So how do we get to the king here is, is the big question. Rook probably needs to go to the F file. Also, I could just jump the knight in right away. Or like this. Could go for a queen trade. There's rook there. Because I'm probably just going to go back. Check the rook. Just, yeah, let's just go back, I guess. And now knight to e4 looks very appealing. So does this one, though. Both of these squares. I mean, I would love for my knights to be on either of those squares. So, ooh. Look at this. Look at the forks. How many forks is that? Oh, my. I got to do it. I got to do it, right? There's got to be a fork next move, right? If there's not a fork next move, I would be amazed. I would be amazed if I don't have a fork next move. I mean, this is so funny. I don't think I've ever seen this. So funny. Oh, he could play queen h7. Queen h7 stops it all. No, it doesn't because I have bishop. Never mind. Not that simple. Not that simple. He goes for that move. Okay, so there's my fork. If I want it, there's my fork. But ah, uh, he's attacking. I see. I see what he's doing. Interesting idea by my opponent. So if I go check, he's going to go here. If I take the rook, he's going to take my bishop. And my knight is still stuck. And this is attacked. Very nice move by our opponent. So the question then is, what do I do? What, what do I do? Such an annoying move because if I move it, there's another threat. That's what's so annoying about it. Wow. Oh, uh, wow, 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 wow. Can't go there. What do I do? I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Check. King goes there. I got to make a move. What do I make? What do I move? Takes. I lose a bishop. And then I jump in with the knight. Is that the best that I have? Super scary. Oh my goodness. There's got to be a better move than that. I just don't know what it is. I just don't know what it is. Getting one more time. I don't know what to do. Oh, man. Okay. I don't know. I, I have to make... I just have to make a decision here. I don't think it's the right choice, but I don't really have time. Or I'm going to lose on time if I don't make some moves. So we're going for this line. Honestly, it didn't look like a great line to me, but... It's the only one I saw. The only one that I saw. I want to take this. I don't know if I can get away with that, but... Check, check. King goes there. He takes me. No. Wow, all of that, and we have an equal material position. That's amazing. He's going on the offensive. I'm going to go here. He can sack the rook, but that doesn't look good. Because I'm going to escape. You can also try to defend over here. We might end up with a queen and rook endgame. I trade that. 
way down on the clock. Seems like my king is a little bit safer than Black's king, only because I can potentially hide behind some pawns. This is a threat. This is hanging. He goes for king g7. Very interesting decision. Very interesting decision. I'm going to play rook f3 here. On rook d2, probably shouldn't take it because of the fork. Okay, he doesn't see that. I'm going to try to jump in here with the knight. Of course, I'm allowing this, but I'm going to run away and hide over here. At least, that's what I would like to do. Just notice this move, but I do have king a4. And I think I'm somehow hopefully surviving, although, ooh, this is getting a little bit scary. Although, I'm going to have my own... Hack. I just don't think it's good enough. But realistically, everything is actually defended if the if the rook takes. So I'm not actually getting checkmated immediately. Right here, we try to trade this maybe, or we force a queen trade. That could no. Then I get checkmated right here. I can't move the queen away from that. If he if is this is assuming the rook takes. It could be other moves. Could be other moves here for black, even queen e8. Queen e8 is interesting. If we traded queens, I feel like black has the advantage, so I would like to leave the queens on the board. That being said, I don't want to get checkmated. Uh, this is intense. This is super intense here. Queen there, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Is what I was thinking. I'm going to go here and, tr and try to use the pawns to, to help me. Right? Because if I can play b3 or b4, I feel like my king is a little safer. So we're going to try to do that. Still have the threat of the knight coming in. But also sack the rook. The rook's not doing a whole lot here, so maybe this sacrifice makes sense. We have a knight here, could be an idea. B3, B4 are ideas. 44 seconds is not a lot. There's no increment, so I got to kind of pick it up here. Okay. Okay, I'm going to go with B4. I want to shut down that checkmate idea. I don't like that. So now I feel a little safer there. And I still have my threats. Okay, that's not a huge deal. Okay. We also could force the queen trade. Now is a different story. We might be able to force the queen trade. Or just take here. It's probably what I'm going to do, honestly. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm not going to open those files up for the queen. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take his bishop. If he tries to move it, I'm going to take this. He goes here. But then I'm going to go on the offensive and I'm going to start looking for checkmates. Just don't have a lot of time. That's the big issue here. Okay, we could take that. Actually, could be a move. But I think I want to just simplify this. Get this bishop out of here. Get my rook into the game. What is black going to play is the question. I have no idea. I, I literally have no idea what move they're going to play. It's dangerous. I mean, if they go here, I could actually play h4.
I don't know if that's better. Maybe it is, really. So I think we've got that move covered. So what else are they going to play instead? Can't really move their bishops. They're probably going to move the queen somewhere. Where are they going to move the queen to? Right there. Okay, we're going to take this. That's a fork if they take me back. So they're going for that one. I've got it covered, I think. All right, we're going to trade the queens because now my king is in a good position here. I think. I think I'm in a good position here. We're going to push this guy, and then we're going to bring the king up, and hopefully win the game. That's the plan. Do I have checkmate? Yes. Ooh, ooh. Heart rate was up on that one. We have mate in two. Honestly, I didn't think I was going to win that game on time. I thought I was going to win another way, but not on time. So I was going to, wherever they went, like, I was just going to bring the queen over and go for a checkmate like that. And, yeah, that was basically anywhere that they went, I could do the same idea. Just move my queen over and then come in for the checkmate. Wow. Wow, that was nuts. This line, it like, every game, that's what happens if they play this bishop c5 line. All right, we take it. Stockfish is just stockfish is just ridiculous. You know what stockfish wants to play in this position? Any guesses what stockfish wants to play in this position? Hey, thanks. Good game. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Rook G1. Come on. Such a computer move. Rook G1. <laughs> oh. Rook's attacked. We'll move it to G1. Of course. So what's the problem if I take here? Because this is what I think I usually do, and it usually doesn't work out for me. Takes, takes. They grab your Rook, and then they just castle, and they're in a good position. Yeah, that's what it, that's what it is. Just good for, for black. Or at least it feels good for black. So what did I do? Played Bishop G5. Okay, it's on the list. It was number three there for a minute. It was number three. So this is a playable line. And bishop c4, okay. So I don't feel too bad about that. And then we took, great, and they made a mistake. They should have played rook f8. And then we're going to take anyway. Takes, takes. And then they're going to take my rook. And then bishop h4. Wait, very similar. Very similar to what happened in the game, except in the game, instead of the rook being on f8, we had the queen on e7. Okay, so this happened. Oh, Stockfish is. Go ahead, take another guess. What do you what do you think Stockfish wants me to play now? What do you think? Yeah, castle. Just castle into the discovered check. Don't even worry about it. 
Just, that's okay. Just give it to Black. Man. Because basically, Stockfish is saying there's no good discovered moves for the knight. Like, if you just move it somewhere, you just go here, and it, who cares? Now your king is safe. And if they take this, you just develop. You just leave it sit there. You don't even worry about it. Wow. So the other line that I was going to play was rook f1. Which Stockfish says is pretty good too. Almost as good as castling. And then knight b to d2. Bishop h4 is not terrible, but it's not quite as good. Okay. All right. And then we had the wildness here. That was that was a good move by our opponent. I thought they were toast here. I was like, it's over. I really thought it was over right here. And then they played a pretty good move. I didn't see. Yeah, I wasn't supposed to do that. Stockfish says queen to b4. To pin the rook. And if they play c5, you go back. Because you wanted to shut the bishop down so badly that you just did that. I mean, come on. And then you go for this check and... Oh! I see. Because you want to play rook g1, which this was a move that I kept wanting to play when I was analyzing. I was like, oh yeah, I want to go here and play rook g1. No, nope, I can't. I can't. I just kept saying that. I can't do that. I can't do that. That's what Stockfish wanted to do. Stockfish wanted to bait... The, not bait it, but like force black to play c5 because you sh now you can go rook g1 even if you lose a piece it's okay you still go here and bam and all of a sudden that puts black's king in big danger even after this it's i guess you have checkmate yeah yeah now you have mate aha that's incredible two piece sacrifice to just just to get the pawn to push to here that's amazing it's amazing and it makes total sense because you needed the rook to g1. It was such a powerful idea that you wasted two moves just to get black to block this off. That's incredible. That is so incredible. Okay. But I didn't see that, of course. Yeah, now it's just an equal position. <laughs> wow. Wow. To see this position here. Yeah, I was in trouble. I didn't see queen b8. I was in trouble here. Black was supposed to come in with the queen like this. I don't have time to analyze all the lines here, but that's what they were supposed to do. Amazing. What a game. Good game to end on. And yeah, this end game was slightly better for me, kind of like I thought. And luckily we had this pawn here that was too far, too fast. Thank you, guys. Um, I'm going to schedule the stream for Tuesday. So like I said, it's Texas Chess Center against uh, the Marshall Chess Club in New York. And everybody plays. There's going to be four rounds for each person. So I'm going to play four games against the other national master on the, the New York team. And then our grandmaster will play against their grandmaster, our international master against theirs. So it should be a fun little uh, tournament. I think it's going to be on Chess TV too. So you can watch the commentary there. Or I'll be streaming and kind of talking a little bit about my thought process. Probably not as much because I want to focus on trying to win. But you could watch wherever you want. But yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and schedule that stream later today. And you can keep an eye. It's Tuesday Tuesday night. So yeah. Anyway, thank you guys. And uh, I will see you next time. Stay sharp. Play smart. Take care.